Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is an AI demo that involves processing invoices the intelligent way. Let's go. All right, so I recently had the opportunity to present the keynote at the Nordic Integration Summit in Stockholm, Sweden. Once again, thank you organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. It was a great event. I would highly encourage people to look for this event next year. And if you have the opportunity to go, I would highly recommend it. Now, I had two sessions at that event. The first one was the keynote where I did talk about AI. And there's kind of two parts, AI and generative AI. And I put together a series of demos for that particular session. And for those that may not have had the opportunity to attend and see them, I've decided I'm going to record each of those and make them available on my YouTube channel. So this is going to be demo number one of five, and I'm going to discuss intelligent document processing, otherwise known as IDP. And IDP is an important tool in the automation toolbox. It allows you to intelligently scrape documents such as PDF, so you can extract key data from that particular document and use it to feed downstream systems. And so usually the alternative is that someone has to go ahead and use their keyboard to get this data into the particular system that needs it. However, using this approach is going to allow for a lot of efficiency for organizations. All right, to set the demo up, the background is we have a retailer called Fourth Coffee and they sell coffee to consumers, typically B2C. But as a result of you know, selling product to consumers, you'd actually need suppliers. And in this case, we're going to have a supplier that has sent us some coffee that we're going to go ahead and sell. And naturally, we want the ability to go ahead and process those invoices. And we want to be able to automate that particular process. Here is a high level overview diagram of our process. So we've got various suppliers and those suppliers can send in their invoices. And in this case, we're going to use email as a way for those invoices to be sent into a shared mailbox that Azure Logic Apps can go ahead and monitor. Now, what Logic Apps is going to do is it's going to receive this email and take the attachment and pass it along to a service called Azure Document Intelligence. Now, using Azure Document Intelligence will allow us to go ahead and scrape the particular data from the document that we can then go ahead and use to feed our ERP. Now, in this case, our ERP is going to be Dataverse. So let's go ahead, let's see this in action. To start the demo, let's take a look at our Dataverse tables. Now, there's two tables that we're gonna populate. One is called invoices, which is going to include the header data for the particular invoice. And then we're gonna have another table that is going to include the invoice details, basically all of the line items for that particular invoice. Now our vendor in this case is called Fabricam Coffee and they're gonna go ahead and send us in an invoice that includes some important information. Uh, so number one, an invoice number, which will be very useful when we want to provide a chat experience for our vendors that they can look up an invoice that we'll see in a future demo. But we've got the date that the this was invoiced on. Then we've got all of the various line items, the different products that they had sold us and the quantity and the costs. And then we also have the subtotal, the tax, and the ground, the grand total. And in addition, we also have their website URL. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to send this in as the supplier to our shared mailbox. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is have that processed. Now, this is the workflow that's going to go ahead and service this particular request. So we've got an email, and when that email arrives, we're going to look for a specific subject filter. We're also going to make sure that we have the attachments included. Now, next up, we're going to go ahead and use the document intelligence connector, and we can go ahead and pass the PDF content or the attachment content to that particular service. And what it's going to do is it's going to return us back all of the various data from that particular call. Now, what we can now do is we can now go ahead and use data from that particular payload to go ahead and fetch the details for this particular account. In this case, the supplier, because we want to make sure that we link our supplier to all of the data that's included in this particular document. And here you can go ahead and see that I'm using the Logic Apps expression language 
to go ahead and parse the particular document looking for key values, key attributes from that perspective. Now, once we've got this payload, we can now go ahead and use it to populate other parts of our table structure. So here we've got our invoices table inside a Dataverse, and we're gonna go ahead and add the data for that particular invoice. So this is the header data, the amount, the invoice date, the invoice number, and we're gonna set a status inside of uh, Dataverse indicating that this invoice is being processed. The next thing that we'll be able to do because we wanna link this particular invoice to the account, we can go ahead and use the relate rows action in the Dataverse connector to create that particular linkage. And now what we're gonna do is for every row that we detect in that table from that invoice, we're gonna go ahead and be able to populate the details for that particular record. And we're gonna be able to do that based upon the Logic Apps uh, definition language and be able to parse this particular document. So let's go ahead and let's flip over to Dataverse and see what exists inside of our table. So if we head over to our tables, let's hit the refresh button here. And there we go, we have the record that represents the header. We can see the total amount, we can see that it has been received, who the supplier is, and that's linked to the specific entity in our accounts table and we can see the particular invoice number. Now, if we flip over to the details, let's refresh this view. We can see all of the individual line items, the description of the products, the quantity, and the individual cost unit, and we can see that it's also linked to a particular invoice number. So if you think about the, the benefit of using this particular approach, we have now saved several keystrokes that otherwise would be performed manually because we would do swivel chair integration and have to basically copy and paste from a PDF document into a screen in Dataverse. And naturally that leads to opportunities for inaccuracies as there could be copy and pasting efforts. So if you think about what would it would take ordinarily to input all this data, we can prove the reliability and consistency by using this intelligent document processing inside of Azure Logic Apps. All right, so let's dive into some more details in terms of how this was set up. So I guess the first piece is let's talk a little bit about Azure Document Intelligence. So if you go into the Azure portal, you search for Document Intelligence, you have the opportunity to provision an instance. And this is going to be an instance that comes out of the Azure AI Services family. Now, once you've gone ahead and provisioned that, uh, you can then go ahead and click into the Go to Document Intelligence Studio, and you will then be provided with a list of different templates. Now, I was able to go ahead and use this invoice template. So this was a pre-built model. And so this is actually provides a lot of benefits in the sense that I didn't have to do any training. Now, sometimes you may need to perform some training and that's fine. And you can go ahead and create custom models. And what this will require you to do is to give a lot of different examples that you can then go ahead and train based upon. And so that's a, a completely viable option. And I think when you get maybe perhaps more complicated invoices, that might be a solution for you. In my case though, I was able to just leverage the invoices out of the box, which was, um, you know, worked out quite well for me. Now, the other piece is that to know is that you're going to have different keys and endpoints. And when you set up the connector inside of Azure Logic Apps, you're gonna be asked for this information. So that is something to be aware of. When you provision the document intelligence instance, scroll down, you'll find the keys there. You'll also see the keys and endpoints showing up under resource management. Now, when we go ahead and look at the run history, this is gonna be a little bit of, well, not trial and error per se, but you're gonna to have to like run one through and then be able to figure out what is the structure of the document that's gonna come back. So when we look at the output from analyzing this invoice, we're going to see a lot of verbose information. So let's just copy this out and let's paste this into Notepad, right? So here you can kind of see we've got pages and pages of information. And what I would say is that, you know, once you've got these invoices and you've gone through this, like the structure is pretty consistent. So it's one of those things where you can kind of, you know, be pretty confident that if the invoice looks very much the same, you're going to have the same values. Now, if you have different invoices coming from different trading partners or counterparties, then naturally you're going to have to account for that as well. 
And so that might be a situation where you do have some sort of workflow, you know, per counterparty, and you're basically filtering based upon different keywords in the email or who the email's from. And then you can probably create like a canonical model where you get all your core information and then sort of have that being processed by a common set of, of workflows. But mileage might vary from that perspective. But here, when we go ahead and inspect, you know, the, the output here, we can see things like the text called fourth coffee, right? So that, that might be a particular, uh, you know, piece of information we're interested in. The next thing here is we've got this invoice number, right? So this is where we've got the invoice and we can see that it can get further broken down. Um, we've got like the number, right? So we've got this, these, well, these boxes or words, this bounding box for invoice, this bounding box for number, and this bounding box for text. And in this case, that's gonna be our invoice number. So that's how I would have gone ahead and parsed the data to go ahead and, and extract the invoice number itself. Same thing with the date. Um, you know, I can go ahead and look for this and then be able to go ahead and extract the date. And once again, this gets further broken down as well. So that's gonna be pretty important. And then same thing, let's go scroll down here. So we've got, now we're in the table. So we can see the product, we can see the price, we can see the quantity, and we can see the total. And then what we're going to see here is we start to get into the different products themselves. So we can see the roast, uh, we can see the quantity, etc. So this is where you're going to have to spend some time performing some parsing in order to go ahead and extract this particular data. Now let's just take a look here. Let's go to the designer and take a closer look at some of these expressions. So we wanted to get the account ID and here we can go ahead and see that we've got body. We're going to look for the analyze result. We're then going to see an array of document results. We're then going to look for fields and then we're gonna look for vendor name text. So we can come back over here and probably the th quickest thing is go vendor name. We can make this a little bit smaller, right? And so like this would be an example of where we would pull this from. We're gonna go vendor name and then we're gonna go text and that's where we can see Fabricam coffee. So that's, uh, that's how we would go ahead and parse that particular uh, piece of information. Now, if we go ahead and look at, say, the description here, oh, that's coming. So we're, what, what I did do is I, I went ahead and used a select table and I went and went after the particular array. So if we come back over here and search for value array, right, this is going to represent my product. And, and I just, because uh, there's a lot of sort of unnecessary information here that I don't need, that's where I went and used the select table. And I basically go after like the particular attributes that I'm interested in. So the amount text, the description text, the quantity text, the unit price text, and, and there we can go ahead and do that in a fairly simple manner. And then once I've gone ahead and done that, then it's much easier to then go ahead and just, you know, put the data uh, into the table. So these came out clean description and quantity. Now, when it came to this one, uh, like I do have a decimal field inside of Dataverse in the text, in the PDF, it had a dollar sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and do some additional uh, transformation just to replace that as well. So that concludes this demo. Hopefully that's uh, interesting for you. If this is something that you're interested in, like this demo, let me know. I'm happy to share this workflow. I'm happy to share that PDF. Um, obviously the Dataverse stuff, you'd have to sort of uh, provision on your own, but happy to, to share this demo if there's interest as well. So that's demo number one. And uh, demo number two will be using Azure AI assistance and being able to provide a chat bot for our vendors that allow them to go ahead and ask questions about the master services agreement. Like for example, when are what are the net payment terms when doing business with Fourth Coffee? And then the other thing is we'll give them the ability to go ahead and do a lookup on their invoice to see what the status is as well. So thanks for checking out this video and look forward to connecting with you again soon in the future. Take care. Bye.